Alright, hello gamers, this is Bad Luck Gamer here, and I am doing another episode of Monster Loves You. For you, those of you just joining in on the series, this is a game where you pick your monster's destiny through various choices in the game, and you're, you have several attributes, bravery, cleverness, ferocity, honesty, and kindness. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and continue through here. Uh, I'm trying to become an elder. I failed last time. I died burning in an ash, but I was the bravest of the monsters. So this time we're going to try for Ferocious and Kind. We're going to try to go for this polar opposite and see what happens. So help me begin your story. How does it begin? Long ago, deep in the forest, monsters called the Whale Mist. That's right, long ago, nestled in the heart of the forest was the monster village. You know what, if you guys have seen this before, sorry. Uh, I'm just going to continue through um i'm gonna do actions and attitude you're now you're not awake yet but soon your first eye will open your simple dreams will give way to life itself you dream of fighting and eating and screaming facing frightening enemies unafraid protecting the innocent monsters from harm i'm gonna be a defender ferocious and honest your body is turning and twisting, growing solid in the middle of a green vat of green slime. It's time to be born. So this will determine kind of what I look like. This actually might be my monster right here. Um, I actually do believe this is my monster. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and continue. Be born. You waken in the chillin', chilling season. Ooh, it actually didn't happen last time. Just as the air begins to turn crispy cool. Last time it was the searing season. So that was just interesting. Onward, your eye is open. You're a morsel now, just barely born. You float into the spawning vat. Dozens of other morsels are exploring, playing, and stealing food from each other. Try to swim. I'm just gonna... No, I'm gonna try to swim. I'm gonna be action-y. Another morsel swims towards you. It opens his mouth, showing a set of small teeth. It bites you. Hi! Swim away from the morsel. What? That's in trouble. Stop that biting. Kill it! The pause... You pause. I'm able to believe that another morsel is trying to eat you. After a moment, you snap out of it and you start to move again. Kill it! I did this last time, but I'm going to be ferocious, so I need that. Uh, Gur, you rip into the violent morsel. It's fangs, but you have claws. Keep fighting. Rawr. Your first snarl. Excellent. When the fight is over, you're chewing on the other morsel's eye, which is all that remains. Serve that morsel, right? Splash, flutter, splish, squeak. Another morsel is too weak to swim properly. It's sinking towards the bottom of the swimming vat. Ignore it and swim on. Too bad, but these things happen. Oh, no. That's terrible. You feel a deep sense of injustice at the small, smaller morsel's impending demise if only you could do something about it i will i'm gonna try to think about saying this time even though i'm an actiony person this time around this is the option i didn't pick last time so i'm gonna do that you send to the morsel determine deck i think of something you rack your newborn brain wait there's some small animal bones and six rotting at the bottom half in beneath the slime clumps prop it up the dying morsel you send to the bottom casting about you gather some six and long curving ribs of the deer Get them jammed together and good and tight. The morsel's own dissolving body holds everything together well enough. Half of its body is above the surface of the slime. Make sure nobody messes up what you've created. You swim in a circle around this rescued morsel, keeping the cruel ones and biters away until your new friend begins to move, to move and solidify. Help the morsel off the structure. As you do, you feel dizzy. That's a first. You've never been dizzy before. Everything goes green. Oh, wow, wake up. Your friend is gone, but not dead. Another morsel points to the edge of the spawning vat while you slept. The weak one grew into a monsterling. Hooray for brains! You've grown t too big for your spawning vat. You must move on to the next stage of life and become a monsterling. No, don't grow up. Fight <laughs> fight it. Growing up isn't something you can fight, little one. Ah, uh, okay. So, got any advice? You're going to get into some trouble with great... Which is great. Exercise your bravery, cleverness, ferocity, kindness, and honesty. What kind of monsters will you be? Indeed. To the brood cave. So this is me, I believe. I'm still this little pudgy monster, which is different from my corn monster I had last time. So let's go on some adventures, shall we? Uh, I'm going to try to do ones I haven't done. So I'm going to do this fighting one. Blistery climbs to the top of the lichen pile. She refuses to let any other monsters and things eat, proclaiming herself ruler of the lichen pile. Charge of Blistery. She's an idiot. Find an elder. To stabilize the pile. Gang up on her. No, I'm gonna lead. Charge at Blistery. And charge at Blistery like a whirling ball of claws. Your ferocity is so, is so manifest that she leaps down and glides away. She nearly soils herself. Now you can be the ruler of the Lycanthal. Yes! 
Alright, um, this one with the scary screaming monster. Three gangly adolescent monsters wander into the cave and start poking gob claws with sticks. She tries to get away, but they're surrounding her. Blistery starts to cry. Get involved and stop the bullying. Blistery shows such Blistery's such a know-it-all. Who cares about her feelings? Look, look, looks like fun. You can get a stick and help poke Blistery. No, we're gonna stop this. You approach to you approach to the conflict. No way you can fight them all. Convince them to leave the with words. Oh yeah, keep your sticks. Taste these claws. Get others to distract them. Then slice them up with your own claws. Yeah, let's work. Use teamwork to get these guys. Cleverness and ferocity. Nice. Blots and Smark run at the bullies from one side as they turn and laugh at the little monsterlings attacking them. You slam into their backs with your claws. Startled and afraid, they flee. Yes. I'm actually noticing some of these are different from last time. There's a fox in this corner, but now it's a question mark, so I'm curious. Um, I do want some kindness, so I'm going to do this broken arm one. Elderly Jaggery walks into the cave, rocking from foot to foot. He howls and slams into a wall, then falls on moving to the floor. Monsters scatter away from his still form. Uh, I'm going to examine him closely. You've never seen a monster look this hurt before. Usually you can get smashed to a pulp and be up on your feet again by dinner time. Jaggery's body looks really damaged. Ooh, that's scary. What happened to him? Stand back and deserve the moment. Someone's got to help him. Do it. Do it! You creep over, afraid but determined, and you see a human's metal knife stuck in Jaggery's back. He's leaking from the wound. You think he might die before anyone can get out. Pull out the knife. Do it! Action! Wow, advanced neurosurgery, plus three, kindness, and bravery. You grasp the knife in your little claws and pull out, then rock it back and forth and pull some more. A gush of red covers you, but Jaggery starts to breathe normally. Yeah, that was cool. Continue. Oh, uh, the question marks. I'm really intrigued by this. Smark sits quietly by himself in the furthest, darkest corner of the cave. He's slumped and deflated, look like a flat float pod, missing half the gas inside. His eye brims with slimy tears. Hug and console Smark. Ask him what's wrong. Leave him be. Hug and console him. I want some kindness. You sit down next to Smark and spread your claws and give him a quiet hug. He sits very still, then leans into you and returns the hug. You both sit there for a while. Oh, that was, that was cute. Uh, excuse me. You're halfway towards leaving becoming an adolescent. Firm up your personality as much as you can. Rocks. Some monsterlings are building low stone towers. Blots comes to you in the he with a heaping arm load of smooth arcs. Do you think this is enough to build a tower? Give him an answer. Help him build the tower. Shout, leave me alone, Blots, I'm busy. Prank Blots nicely. Pull me and prank. I'm gonna help him build a tower. Kindness, honesty, cleverness, nice. Like this, you point to a good flat spot on the ground, then start laying out the base of the tower. You and Blots build the best one in the cave. Yeah, I'm gonna be a, like a perfectionist monster. Disgruntled monster. Hamrag, an adult monster who sleeps in a big pile of monsterlings. Everyone is comfortable. Comfy. Blots giggling, sticking like in all <laughs> in all four of Hamrag's nostrils. Hamrag eyes shoot open as he starts to choke. Blots shushes you with a threatening scowl. You're not afraid of Blots. Help Hamrag. That's funny. Help Blots out. No, that's not funny. Bravery. You jump on Hamrag's head and knock some of the lichens loose. He's squeals and gasps and remembering that he can breathe through his mouth. <laughs> the crisis averted. Hamrag glow glowers down past his jowls, scowling as though you hadn't saved him. He roars and demands to know who plugged up his nose. I'm going to cover for blots. I'm going to be brave about it. Hamrag seems to smell your lie. The monster traps you under a heavy rock and sits on it for a pun- well, for a while as punishment. Blots approaches you afterward and offers a quiet thank you for protecting him. Alright. Um, happy monster. Oh, I've done this one before. Alright, so they're racing to the top of here. Um, they invite you to join them. You don't see a good way up. Look for fast, just face it, admit it, you aren't much. Make an effort, but stop before you get hurt. Cleverness and honesty. She calls you a coward as you slide back down to the cave, but you don't care. Okay, I actually should have done the one I did last time, but uh, I'm trying to do things differently this time. 
Alright, the oil spill, whatever this is. Oh, the glowing slime, that's right. Uh, I'm gonna eat the slime, actually. It's, it gives you bravery. A lot of it. Alright, you creep close and swallow a mouthful of the slime. It doesn't taste like normal slime, and it's not dissolving, and it's dissolving everything in your stomach. Oh no. I forgot about that. Oh my, you wake up and you find that you're no longer a monsterling. You're growing up. Or, yeah, growing up. Wow! Elderly Marinus calls the oldest monsters, blah, 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 blah. Done this before. So you should join them. She looks grave. Go with Elder Marinus. Marinus shuffles down the long tunnel, turning this way and that amongst the dozen of forking passages. Keep going. Oh, see, there is my little monster. Marinus stops in a warm, humid chamber with a pit on the floor. She points to the, the, this pitch, which sees with a thick mist. I'm going to jump right in. I'm going to be brave. You fall in. Bravery, yes. And I fall some more. And you fall, and you're falling. And f other monsters are falling? Question mark? Yes, yeah, some of them are crying. Aw. And you can't see through the mists. Or is it fog? Maybe it's clouds. Moans and groans and whispering screams. Where is this? I must be somewhere. You land on smooth, flat stones. Despite the swirling vapor, the floor is dry as a bone. You hear other monsters breathing nearby. Some of them are still above you. You're still falling. I'm going to get out of the way. I didn't do this last time. You rejoin some of the monsterlings at the edge of the mist. There are some are more passages out of here than you can count. Some monsters begin to panic. Others look determined. I'm going to take charge. The other monsters watch you curiously. Lead the way personally. Slash the others to show them you're in charge. Help everyone work together. I'm going to do that. Goodness. You lead the other monsterlings in a rousing song, putting aside their trepidation. They advance into the twisting passages. Soon you have all convened in a cave full of even thicker mists. Where is everyone? We can't see each other. The chamber swirls with mist, smoke, fog, vapor. Except it's not any of those things. It's ghosts. Hundreds of them, large and small. They're everywhere. Spooky. One by one, the pale ghosts begin to turn their attention to you, their eyes glowing different colors. Uh, I'm going to stand fast. The ghosts speak in many voices, all hollow and distant, all in unison. They ask you, do you fear? I'm going to wait. I'm going to be the quiet. No, I'm going to attack them. You scream and leap. The ghosts are insubstantial, swearing around your claws like nothing. Nothing at all? Nothing at all. Stupid spectral monsters. They laugh at you and prove that you're not entirely untouchable. Thin tendrils mist circle your throat and begin to squeeze. And I pass out. Alright, so this time... Uh, I am brave, and ferocious, and kind. So that's kind of what I wanted. Not very honest, though, and a little clever. Don't get respect yet. Alright, so that's the end of this episode. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I guess I'll see you guys in the next episode. Ciao for now.